I think I first started playing soccer when my best friend tried out for a competitive team. We went to the tryout and after the first two days he made the team and, and I got cut. But it just so happened that a couple weeks later the coach called and said if I was willing to play goalkeeper I could be on the team. I joke with my friend all the time saying thanks for pushing me to go to this tryout because it, it really worked out in the end. I was born in Fort Chuke, Arizona which is a military community and there's not a lot going on there. After a couple years, there was a group of us that really enjoyed doing this. And so we committed to make the hour, hour and a half trek every day to train in Tucson. And at the time, the first club was called Tucson United, which was started by a mentor of mine, Wolf Fang Weber, which eventually morphed into Tucson Soccer Academy. He came over in the 80s or actually the 70s, and he started out as a cook, but eventually he saw that soccer wasn't existent in Tucson, and he eventually just kind of became the godfather of soccer. But at the end of the day, outside of all of that, he's just wolf to me. He still continues to give me feedback about my games. He watches all of them. When I was in Germany, he watched all of them. He'd get up early in the morning to get on the internet and find some random Chinese or Arabic stream. The relationship was more than just a player coach. It was, it was about uh, almost like a second dad to me. The way some of these players talked about the University of Portland, it was heralded in some sort of way. Certain players were going through the system, uh, Steve Shrundalo, Casey Keller, Connor Casey. So I eventually went to Portland. I played there for four years, and it was some of the best years of my life, but more importantly, it really helped shape me as the type of professional I wanted to be. On the day of the draft, a couple teams had called me and said that we're interested in taking you. But I told them that there's a good chance that the next day that I'd be flying out. What they didn't know is I had no idea if I was going to Europe or not. And I was kind of just going off the word of some agent that I'd never met. And so literally the next day, I got a phone call from the agent. He had a plane ticket for me. I left the day after that. Two days later, I signed with FC Kaiserslautern, and, and that was kind of how it all unraveled. Making that jump from college ball to first team football was difficult, but it eventually allowed me to get to the point where I was comfortable playing day in and day out, and I wasn't worrying about the mistakes I was gonna make on the field. In 2009, I was playing well enough to get called into the national team. That was a fantastic experience, getting called in, going with the team to the Confederation Cup in South Africa, and then staying with the team for the Gold Cup making my debut in Boston, that, that really was a dream come true. Of course, there are some other logistics going on in the background that I wasn't aware of. Being away from training camp and having a new coach didn't help. Coming in three to four weeks late, it didn't look like I would be starting when they're in the first league. So I wanted to find a different situation, and, and my wife and I decided that we were going to go to Kase. And I was playing that first season, but unfortunately the team wasn't doing so great. And finally, towards the end of the season, a guy came in and he wanted to go a different direction. And unfortunately, I wasn't part of that direction. So fast forward a couple more months to January in 2012, I was at a point where I didn't know what was next in my career. Everything that was enjoyable about the game was starting to, to fade and throw in the fact that my wife and I lost a baby during that time. And my wife's father gets diagnosed with cancer. There was just all sorts of stuff going on. My career was my focus. It was the thing that got me up every morning and, and pushed me through the days. And when it all started to fall apart, I started to realize that maybe my life, my identity is not just built in a career. And so I came to a point towards the end of July where I thought that maybe it was done. And I was really at a broken state. And, and really a lot of the joy that came with the game was, was sapped away. And so I was just looking for any sort of part-time work that I could get that would offer some sort of benefit. And I went in for about two weeks with a real estate company and I kind of just did a glorified errand boy job and I gave it serious thought. I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I, I really thought this is something I can do in those two weeks. Good thing my wife talked me out of it. She was hard set on just giving it one more chance. And she said, give it two weeks. If nothing comes about, then we definitely feel like the Lord's taking us a different direction. And I called the MLS and about eight days later, it all worked out and, and I ended up getting picked up in the allocation with New York. But I think that time period was really special. I just see the support that my family offered. I see the support and the wisdom that my wife offered. And so I know that regardless of what happens here in New York, what happens in my future, I think my priorities have been realigned. If anything, I just felt more humbled. And at the end of the day, the only thing that I can control is my effort each day on the field. The things outside of that, whether it's the coach's decision or how people view me, those are things that I can't control. So our expectations going forward, if you look at our team on paper, our personnel is not only deep, but very talented. So we have high expectations. We have the right guy in there at the helm. So we feel like we can do a lot of things in the sense that I'm going to work hard. I'm going to be the best teammate that I can be. And after that, the rest is out of my hands.